Hello everyone and welcome on the Lone Engineer channel. In case you don't know me, my name is Emmanuel and on this channel I talk about advanced C++ and Python experiments. In this episode, I would like to give you an overview on a small tool which can be used to track your face in a video recording. So with this tool, I will move from this kind of full area recording to this kind of uh, process of, uh, recording where you see that the face is always centered and the frame is uh, made squared around uh, that face. To give you a bit of context for this project, lately I've been trying to use Filmora from Wondershare to do some post-processing with uh, my recordings and I really like using this tool. It's working just fine most of the time. But in the first project that I made, I was in fact trying to cut giant uh, rush recordings into smaller clips, trying to remove all the silence and hum and other filler words if you want. And on top of that, I was also displaying my face um, in a circular frame. But at some point, I don't know what I did and I, I guess I did something wrong. I just lost actually the circular frame on uh, the, the stream with my face and on that stream I had countless of small clips so I had to re-add the circular frame one by one which was a very tedious process because I'm not very familiar with uh, Filmora and the shortcuts and everything so this remind me how much I really prefer to work with uh, procedural processing and that's the reason why I decided to uh, stop working on this project here to try to help me reduce the interaction that I need in the Filmora. So now let's get started. As usual the first thing that I did was of course to ask ChatGPT what to do to try to perform this operation, track your face in a video recording. And this is the first code snippet that was provided by a ChatGPT. As you can see, it's going to use OpenCV and we're using MoviePy in Python. You start with opening a video file and then you're going to use this FR image function providing the process frame callback. In this process frame, the first thing you do is try to detect a face and you're going to receive some coordinates if there is actually a face in the current frame. Once you have the coordinates, it's easy enough to figure out what is the center of the area and what is the size of the area of interest and to try to then crop this part of the frame to finally resize this to the size that you want for the output. So the other method here is the one which is actually called to perform the face detection and in this case we're using OpenCV and the Cascade classifier. But I actually didn't try this code because the first thing I was thinking here was uh, Okay, maybe this would work, but I'm not very confident that the Cascade classifier will detect any kind of face because it's supposed to be really frontal face, so when I'm turning around like that, maybe it's not going to detect the face correctly. That's why I asked ChatGPT for another option that might be more efficient, maybe for generic faces. The second option that ChatGPT suggested was this one. As you can see here, we're going to use this package, the MTCNN package, which is actually a um, deep learning neural network trained to detect faces. Most of the code is very similar to the um, initial suggestion. We still have this process frame function and the detect faces function. But now in the detect faces, we're going to use an instance of this MTCNN TCNN network to perform the face detection. So from there I decided that this was probably worth giving it a try. So I started to prepare a skeleton component in my Nerve Proge project. In the Nerve Proge project I already have a component which is the movie handler component. I guess yeah it was a good idea to just put an additional function in there. So I simply added a new script command in this component which is called process webcam view. When it comes to executing this process webcam view script command, I'm going to take an input file as another argument and then call the process webcam view function. For now, the process webcam view is just a placeholder, just displaying what is a file that we're going to process. And then I created a simple script called handle cam view, which is going to execute this process webcam view script. 
A quick check trying to execute this uh, script will show that it's working as expected for the moment and simply displaying the file name. The next step was to try to add those functions that uh, ChatGPT suggested in the movie handler. So we have the detect faces here, which I turn into a class function, and also the process frame, which is again another class function now. And I updated the process webcam view to perform the logic suggested in the ChatGPT code. So we're going to open the video file, perform the frame processing, and finally write that clip to an output file. Now to perform this face detection, of course, we also need to import this package, which means I also had to add the corresponding package in my media environment. This is the virtual environment used to execute the handle cam view script. After updating the media environment here, we need to execute this call to update the installation for this uh, Python environment. Unfortunately, trying to execute the handle cam view script at that point gave me the following error. We're going to process this input file, but we see that it's actually depending on TensorFlow, which was not available in the environment. So I searched for some indication on how to install TensorFlow with CUDA support properly and found this page. And from there, we see that the package that we need to install is this one. I added the corresponding package into my virtual environment description then, and then we perform another update request. If you need to download and install TensorFlow with CUDA support yourself, you need to keep in mind that it's going to take some time to perform the installation because the packages that you try to retrieve are pretty big. After those changes, executing the handle cam view script was working fine, as you can see here. Except that for each frame, it's taking a significant time, about one second. So there's really no way we could use this implementation as is for processing our recordings. I just asked ChatGPT how to improve the performances and one of the options was to use multiple threads to perform the processing on multiple frames at the same time. And this is how this could be done, for instance. So I have tried this implementation, but unfortunately, uh, there is another problem here because you're actually going to extract all the frames from a given source video clip and transform them all to produce a list of frames here. So the Python process was taking like 20 gigabyte of memory on my side and this was just freezing my computer so not really working. So the next idea I got to try to improve the performances was to not perform the face de detection for every single frame. Instead, what you could do, for instance, if you have a source clip with uh, 60 frames per second, you could just detect uh, the face once per second. So on one frame every 60 frames. And for the other frames, you can just basically interpolate the, the position that you found for the face uh, the previous time and um, you're going to progressively move your face area this way. So this is the implementation corresponding to this idea. When we start processing the, the file here in the function, we will set the frame index to zero. And then in process frame, every time we reach the, this function, we're going to check if uh, the current frame index can be divided by 60. And if it's a case, this is where we perform the face detection. Once a face is detected, we're going to update those two values here, which are the target face position. So this part is done only once every 60 frames. But then for every frame, you're going to do this part, which is a simple exponential mean computation, which is going to give you the current face position that you want to use. Once you have the current face position, then you can just perform your business um, as usual and try to extract this face area. And after that, you are of course going to increment the frame, the frame index by one. So this will help a lot to improve the processing speed and this will produce this kind of uh, output video. So you see that there is a tracking of the face 
But what you can also notice is that every one second there is a jump and then we're progressively uh, moving to a new target position. One, two, three, four, five. At that point, I decided to introduce a window with mean class, which was going to be used instead of for the exponential moving average computation. So in the process frame now, I would just initialize those uh, face um, coordinates to be window with mean objects. And I would just add the target face position for every single frame. Then I would retrieve the current mean, and this would produce this kind of uh, output this time. So you see that the movement is less um, visible every one second. After that, still trying to improve a bit on the performances for the face detection, I found that using the FaceNet PyTorch package might uh, provide um, better performances. So on this page, you could find some indication on how to use this package and the MTCNN component inside the package. And I have just updated my detect face function to use this uh, component from the face net package. This works in a similar way as the previous package. It's again going to produce some boxes, but the API is not exactly the same. And also, once you have one of those boxes, as you can see here, uh, the coordinates are not the same anymore. So you need to proceed differently here. And of course, you have to install the corresponding package in your virtual environment. And since you're going to use PyTorch here, you want to use to install the Torch package, ensuring that you're going to use the CUDA version of it. And this is the end result that you would Get using the FaceNet package instead of the default MTCNN package. The result is actually almost the same as uh, in the previous version, except that this time you're going to generate about 100 um, images per second instead of uh, 60 images with the previous package. So the performances uh, are significantly better in this case. Finally, the last idea I had was to try to remove this small delay that we that we have currently because what we're doing here is we're computing the face position for say frame 0 then you're going to compute the frame the face position for frame 60 and basically when you are between frame 0 and frame 60 you're only going to use the frame 0 position then when you are between frame 60 and frame uh, 120, you're going to interpolate to progressively reach the position for frame 60. So you are one second late, basically. One way to fix that would be to compute the face position uh, for those keyframes before actually producing the final video recording. So you would basically compute all the positions that you want for frame 0, frame 60, frame 120 and so on. And then you can easily interpolate between those two positions when you are in intermediate frames. So that's the idea that I have implemented next. In the process webcam view here, what I had it is this part you are going to uh, figure out what is the total number of frames and then you're going to iterate on uh, the, all those frames using your frame window land which is 60 frames by default here and with this call you're going to compute what is your face position at that current frame so when you're done collecting all the face positions you have the corresponding value here for the frame indices and the x and y positions then you can build this interpolation function i have tried in fact to use the cubic uh, interpolation mode and the linear interpolation mode and i feel that the linear version is a bit better and here is the collect face function 
where we're going to perform the actual phase detection but then in the process frame function we don't perform any phase detection anymore we just use the interpolation function to figure out what is the interpolated position we want to use for the phase and here is the first output i generated with uh, this uh, removal of uh, the delay Here you see that the movement is very smooth, but in fact in this case we are only taking um, phase position every 180 frames. Also this first clip was done with cubic interpolation. Next you have the same clip, but this time with one phase position every 60 frames. So you see that the movement is much more important. And finally, one uh, phase position every 60 frames again, but this time using the linear interpolation, which, as I said, feels a bit better from my perspective. After that, I tried to push it a little bit further, and instead of just tracking the phase X and Y position, I was also next tracking the size of the phase. So using the dimension that was provided by the detector and then using the size to perform again uh, an interpolation for every frame and using the current face size to apply some kind of uh, zoom in zoom out effect with the introduction of this uh, effect here this dynamic scaling effect as i call it you also had to be careful with uh, the intensity of this zooming effect because otherwise if you use the full intensity it's uh, well not very good to see uh, you can have the phase growing um, up and down very quickly that's why I am performing an exponential mean um, adaptation here and in this process I have also increased a little bit uh, phase window length so this is the final result that we get with the scaling effect at play at the same time of uh, the um, X and Y position update. And finally, after that, I thought I could try to also provide support for transparency in the video recording. So. The idea was to really try to apply this circular masking and record the, the, the final video with uh, fully transparent pixels outside of this circular area. So to perform this, I think you need a different um, file format. So I've been trying to use WebM and also Move. And you also need to change your video codec in that case so i've tried to use all of those and you also need to specify your pixel format to force the alpha channel in the video stream so i've tried also with those two pixel formats but in the end it really doesn't work in the process frame i was of course trying to generate an rgba array so with four channels here but i don't know why i've I think there's something not working properly with MoviePie. It doesn't seem to really take into account the alpha channel that I'm providing here, and it's only reproducing garbage. So for the moment, transparency doesn't really work. What I could do maybe would be to use um, a green screen, and then in Filmora I could easily remove this green screen. But for the moment, I think I'm going to keep this tool as is. And I will see later if I really need to, to push it further and uh, try to use this green screen as I said. Anyway, now I'm going to start using this. And meanwhile, if you have any question or if there is anything unclear, please let me know in the comments. And otherwise, see you next time. Bye bye.